The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the producers and the individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the staff of the Sun Prairie Media Center, its members or underwriters, the board members of the Media Center Commission, Charter Communications, TDS Telecom, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Hello and welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit and the man seated next to me is proof that human cloning is possible. And his name is Mike Roth. I'm like the seventh of me. That is unreal. It's crazy. The technology that it's just mind boggling good it, and no one knows about it yet. But don't, <laughs> isn't, isn't it like inbreeding where with each one, like things start to kind of get a little wonky or does it get better with no, each one? No, it's better every single time. Oh. See, you, you get rid of your scars and uh -huh. bad memories. It's uh, So this is you with peak memory? This is peak memory. <laughs> you should have seen me when I started. <laughs> it was terrible. I love it. I can't wait for the eighth version. It's going to mm. be the best. Uh, <laughs> I'll be able to move things with my... Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Uh, all right, let's get started with our look. Last week we wrapped up 2018 for good. We put a bow on it. Yeah. Now it's full on all 2019. We're watching movies whether we like them or not. Here we go. It's January. <laughs> get used to it. Uh, the first movie we have on the marquee this week is uh, from director Neil Berger. It is called The Upside. The Upside stars Kevin Hart as a man named Del Scott, Brian Cranston as a man uh, Philip Lacasse. Uh, it is a remake of a film called The Untouchables, which uh, is the second most successful film, uh, the second most successful French film in history. Really? The Untouchables is. Only came out about five years ago, too. Hmm. Um, and, of course, we got to remake it for the Americans because they ain't going to watch a French movie. we got to make it with, uh, with big stars. Yeah. So it is a true story of Philip, who is a successful man, successful businessman who was paralyzed in a freak accident, um, and now he is a quadriplegic. That's Brian Cranston's character, cannot move from the neck down. He needs a full-time caregiver to help him with everything that he does. Enter Del Scott, played by Kevin Hart, who is, uh, he's kind of struggling in all aspects of his life at this point. Um, he, you know, he, he's got a, a son that his, uh, uh, you know, the, his, whose mother won't let him really see him. He's lost his job. He's going through a lot of hard times. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he gets this job as a caregiver. Uh, very unqualified and seemingly completely mismatched for this job. But uh, he, he becomes uh, the man who helps uh, Philip Lacasse kind of get along with life, um, kind of get a new perspective on life. And, the, you know, and as with all of these stories, they learn a little about each other as they oh. learn about themselves. And it just, oh, man. <laughs> you know, we go through good times, we go through bad times. Um, and I, I kind of, I really enjoyed their screen chemistry, actually, between Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston. Uh, Nicole Kidman is also in here as Yvonne, who works for Brian Cranston's character. Um, but it's, I, I, I liked their chemistry quite a bit. Kevin Hart was actually really good in this. I was surprised. I, he, he's really hit and miss. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see this movie, but I wanted to see this movie just because it looks like Kevin Hart is taking more of a straight role than his usual I mean, he's got his over-the-top comedic moments in here, but uh -huh. he's also got some heart to it, and he's really he's putting in the work on this one. And I think, you know, you're acting opposite Brian Cranston. It's not yeah. like you're opposite, acting opposite Will Ferrell. Like, no, this guy's going to bring it. I better bring it, too. Yeah. And Cranston, I mean, he can't move the entire movie, and he's still bringing it from the head, from the neck up. He's... <laughs> He's giving it all he's got. Um, the film itself, I mean, like, the performances I think are great. The film itself is kind of mediocre, oh. like, writing-wise. Okay. It's really kind of basic, where the original version is much more complex. Okay. Um, and the characters, it, it's, I don't know, this just felt very much like, uh, well, we've got to learn about each other. I mean, it feels like, like the Green Book was, uh, you know, last year, mm -hmm. which was much more in-depth, but it was just kind of like, Okay, and then they have to learn about each other as they go on this journey with each other, you know. And, and, yeah. and but there wasn't any more depth into it than that, um, you know. I, I have a hard time because I really love the original. I think okay. the original is a great movie, and so I can't really separate. Like maybe if I didn't know the source material, maybe I'd enjoy it a lot more than I did. Mm -hmm. 
I still think he was good. I still think that uh, the upside is, is, it's fun, it's worth watching, good performances. I just okay. wish the writing was a little stronger for this, but uh, I ultimately gave it three out of five stars. Uh, what were the major differences? I mean, besides the language. The, the major differences were that, well, the first one kind of focused more mm -hmm. on the quadriplegic. This uh -huh. one focused more on the Kevin Hart character. Oh. Um, and so it was kind of a flip-flop just in the, the major focus of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, the first one just had more heart. Okay. Um, it, because it wasn't really a comedy, you know, where this one is. But it didn't have more Kevin Hart. It didn't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> had much less Kevin Hart than this one does. So anyways, uh, I give it three out of five. Worth checking out, especially nice. with uh, the movies that are on the marquee this week. So. Yeah. What do you have for us, sir? Well, uh, remember uh, Dog's Purpose? I do. Well, these people, they decided to make another movie about a dog. Oh, I like dogs, um, yeah. Yeah, well, except for that one was about a dog dying over and over again. Yeah. Totally sad. But anyways, let's keep up the sad theme, and <laughs> let's do A Dog's Way Home. Um, Bella, the small dog uh, voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard, is... Um, Picked up by Lucas, played by Jonah Howard. Ooh. He brings the dog home because the dog is super, super, super cute. Um, it was a dog he found um, kind of messing around with a bunch of cats that were homeless. Um, and his mom has PTSD. She was in the war, and she he knows that this dog would bring a little happiness. Uh, problem is, is this town in Denver does not allow pit bulls, and this dog is a pit bull. <laughs> Another problem is he keeps on ticking off the guy who across the street Stay who owns the property. Lawn. Yeah, it's pretty much like <laughs> that, and he sneaks in to get the dog. Um, then they sneak the dog in to, they, they actually constantly do illegal things throughout this, uh, <laughs> most of this movie, until the dog runs away, and then it just becomes kind of a cry fest. This okay. dog can't get home, it's traveling 400 miles to try to get home, it takes over two years, it made friends with a bobcat, no, a mountain lion, yeah. that uh, it kind of calls uh, Big Kitty, or Big Kitten. Okay. Um, he makes uh, friends with another uh, homeless vet mm -hmm. who ends up dying with the dog chained to him. Oh, this great. this is really kind of a very sad All movie. All of these are. Um, are they, me? <laughs> they are, and they're making another one. They make yeah, you dog's teary. purpose too. It really is, yeah. <laughs> they really are not feel-good <laughs> movies, but they fool you into thinking it is with all these promos because you see happy dogs and people being happy, yeah. and then you watch it, and it's like, ha, 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 ha. No, <laughs> you are going to cry, <laughs> and you're going to feel bad until the very end, but by then it's too late. You're screwed up. Um, <laughs> okay, so the movie does pull the heartstrings, uh -huh. and it's nice that it highlights uh, problems with people with PTSD. Mm -hmm. But it does it in this weird, very G, weird way of doing it. Um, you're supposed to kind of say hooray for every time someone breaks a law or a rule. Mm -hmm. And anybody who is a rule follower, they overemphasize as the bad his way guy. Home right there, but... It's most of the movie. It's 400 miles. <laughs> <clears throat> it, and it kind of gives me this feeling of you're trying to cater to kids, but you're all, like small kids. But you're also telling them break the rules and let's just have a Screw good cry. The rules. <laughs> just all the time, everything is so sad. But you get fooled into seeing it because it looks like a cute dog. Sure. Movie. Um, so with that being said, I didn't like this movie. Oh no. Yeah, I, I wish I could say it was mediocre, but it, it's not. It's just a, one of those crying dog fests, uh -huh. and I don't like. That way, I want to feel a little bit better when I come out of these movies. Um, the CG on this also very shoddy, very that, outdated. That uh, mountain lion looked rough. Yeah, and there's also some coyotes, yeah. and there's a scene where they're playing together on the ice, very Disney-esque oh, type style. Good. That the CG looked a little wonky, um, but overall, it, the reason why I gave this movie the score you will be getting is because. It is not a happy movie, yeah. and it feels weird just to be so kind of G-feeling and at the same time feel like you have to cry and watch people break rules and laws sure. all the time. It's just weird. Um, what did you, what'd you end up giving this? I gave it a 2.0. 2.0. <laughs> Thank you. And, and that's, uh, I feel like it was kind of generous. And lucky us, we are going to see a sequel to A Dog's Purpose, which again, the previews show happy, healthy dogs, yeah. but we all it's, know... 
they're going to die it's over and over again. To me that, I mean, this is now becoming an annual tradition. <laughs> yeah. These very similar dog movies are mm -hmm. just rolling out. And I suppose they make money. Yeah. So let's keep making them, right? Dennis Quaid will keep coming back to make more. Yeah. <laughs> let's keep making them. It's weird to me, though, that this is like a cycle that we were in. And not only these, which are the same people doing them, mm -hmm. but we had um, Alpha last year, which is another very similar dog movie that yeah. was actually decent, mm. right? That one I did not see. Uh, then there was Axel. That was the robot dog. Mm. I've been missing these. That's the other one Man. I did see. I see, I miss the days where it was like Benji. Yeah. If Benji goes out, had a bunch of adventures, n yeah. Benji was tough against grizzly bears and stuff, y you felt good. Um, at, at the, the end, end of the, of the day, movie, Benji went home. Yeah, it was, it was cute. It was awesome. Yeah. But now they're just sad. Manipulative. They are. Yeah, I don't want to be very manipulative. manipulative. Good word. Yeah. Uh, the next movie we have on the marquee is a film from director Mimi Leder. It is on the basis of sex. Uh, it is the uh, biopic uh, about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, in her early days. This is hot off the heels of the documentary, RBG, that came out last year, which is now streaming on Hulu. I would recommend that. Um, this stars Felicity Jones as Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, and it focuses on her days as a student at Harvard Law and then at Columbia Law and her first landmark case as a young attorney. Um, the, this film, oddly enough, as I was reading about it, has been stuck in developmental hell for years. Like Natalie Portman was supposed to play this role for hmm. four years. She was on, on this, finally gave up. They went with Felicity Jones. I think she was good. Um, you also have Army Hammer as her husband, Martin. Um, and the movie is about the obstacles that she had to overcome in a very patriarchal society within law and Harvard law. And just the, the, the whole thing of, of basically being patted on the head, be like, you're just a woman, you do this. Mm -hmm. And how, mm -hmm. uh, how Ruth Bader Ginsburg really fought against the in-your-face institutional sexism. And that kind of became her calling, heart, calling card through most of her years. But this really just kind of narrows in the focus of this very early period in your life. Um, I think Felicity Jones did a great job of showing the humanity of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, as well as the toughness that she has. Mm -hmm. um, I really like that, uh, and you would see that later on in her life. Um, I think Army Hammer was enjoyable as her husband Martin. Which is weird for you it's to say. It's very weird. Like, yeah. I, this is two movies in a row now, Sorry to Bother You, uh -huh. and this one, that I'm like, you know what, I kind of like Army Hammer in this. And I think it's smart because in real life, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a tiny lady, right? Yeah. And so Felicity Jones isn't a big lady, but how do you make her seem really tiny? Put her next to a giant like Army Hammer in every scene mm -hmm. because that man is a full-grown giant. They also, and I actually thought this was a little silly, but they kept on hammering it home over yeah. and over again how small how she tiny is. It's she like, is. yeah, she's tiny. We could see it. We don't have to be told it anymore. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I thought it had a really fun cast, Sam Watterson, Stephen Root, Kathy Bates. I mean, these are all people who were kind of telling her no along the way. She, it's, a, it's a movie of her being told, you can't do that. You're a lady. That's not a lady's place. Well, you also had the story of her and her daughter, uh, which I really enjoyed, mm -hmm. and I wanted more of that. Um, Jane, um, younger daughter for, uh, uh, um, and she is kind of a typical child of the time where yeah. she is all of a sudden saying, no, these are my rights. These are the bold things because I am is, doing. The women's lib movement of the 60s mm -hmm. is really flaring up. And it was interesting to watch Jane tell um, her mom that, no, this is not how it is. And yeah. it's like, wow, you are talking to a future <laughs> Supreme Court justice yeah. who fought really hard to put herself in men's roles yeah. all her life and then to have her daughter say, no, you're not doing enough, I thought was an interesting side story. I also thought it was interesting that the actor that played Jane was really only 11 yeah. years <laughs> younger yeah. than really? uh, than uh, Felicity Jones. So I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, the acting in here I thought was fantastic. Yeah. There was some moments where I felt like the momentum was being bogged down mm -hmm. by dialogue that didn't feel too important to the movie. Okay. And by the time it got to the end of the movie, I was actually kind of surprised that we were at the end of the movie because it lacked that kind of climax I wanted to Yeah, film. you're you're kind of expecting this big build up. We had it a couple years ago with the Thurgood Marshall movie. I yeah. kind of compared that in my head as I'm watching it because I mean they're both Supreme Court justices. They both went through different things, but similar things on their way, you know, being told, no, you can't do that because of your color or your sex. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm kind of playing that movie in my mind as I'm watching this. And there were some similar moments in there. 
um, that had more of the big, the big courtroom scene that you're yeah. expecting, you know. Um, one of the things that I, I was kind of hoping a little more for in this movie that they didn't get into that is really present in the documentary is her husband, Martin, and how he was very happy to give up his dreams to help push her along. And they kind of, they kind of dance around that a little bit, but he really did. Like just say, nope, you're you're gonna be we're putting all efforts behind you. Mm -hmm. Um and I, I think that's just amazingly commendable on what he did in real life. And in here, Army Hammer, it still feels like he's kinda I don't know, his his portrayal of Martin felt like he was still kind of like, Well, I still I I wanna be the big star too. Yeah. As well as you. Um But I enjoy I enjoyed this. I think that it was uh, a very interesting film. I think it's a very pertinent film right now. You know, I yeah. mean, and, it, and it's interesting to me that we have this and the documentary both coming out at, at a time when, you know, her health is kind that of failing. Is exactly. I felt the same way. It's kind of interesting. But there is a moment, and no mm -hmm. spoilers, but there is a moment where they show the real Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah. And I got all welled up. <laughs> like, look at this old lady coming up the steps. With a, so... Yeah, when they have so many movies about someone yeah. that's documentary style, usually that's something that you wait until... Posthumously. Yeah. yeah, and to have them both go back to back, it almost feels like you're forcing the situation. She's in her 90s. Yeah. It's, don't do that to her. Yeah. You know, she's a nice don't lady. Don't that do that longer, to her. I'm afraid. <laughs> but gonna, yeah, it's, don't outlive us all. I hmm. do appreciate, though, that uh, that they decided to narrow the focus on her life and her career and mm -hmm. not try and do a full life spanning biopic. I think mm -hmm. that would have been just messy. There's so much to cover. Yeah. That's what the documentary really did. And I highly recommend the documentary. Yeah. Because like, it really does like hit all of the huge cases along her career that set her on the path to where she is now. Mm -hmm. So if you want like a, something to see her entire lifespan of work, that's a good one. This I like that they just focused in like this is what started her to become what she became. And I really thought this case was interesting too. It was mm -hmm. uh, trying to get into Breaking down those laws that said women or people on gender were different than people of another gender. Turn the sexism around. And you had that whole turnaround, and it was cool to see, like, the victim and mm -hmm. how he wasn't, he's just a normal person. And right. I liked how they focused on that and how she used that in a way not only to help him, but also to say, these laws are wrong. Yeah. And I liked how this movie explained it. I just wish. It had some a better momentum to it. I yep. really did. Yep. What did you end up giving on the basis of sex? I gave it a three point five, which is solid. It's a really good movie, but I wanted it to be better because I really love uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, I agree. I gave it three and a half as well. I think it's a it's a good movie. There's some great moments in here, uh, some great performances. Like I said, if you're all, all interested in this, uh, streaming on Hulu right now and probably sitting at your red box is uh, the RBG documentary. Check that out because that's mm -hmm. really good. But yeah, I think it was good. I enjoyed this one. Speaking of great movies, though. What do you have for us as the last film on the marquee? Well, this one was kind of a surprise. Uh -huh. I was not expecting this one to come out. It just seemed to come out of nowhere. I'm, like, really excited. Replicas, Keanu Reeves, he uh, comes back to redo his Johnny Monomic thing mm -hmm. with the computers. Um, he is a scientist, brilliant scientist. His family dies in an auto accident. So what he needs to do is bring him back. Well, part of his research is to take memories from one thing and put it into another, usually robots. Um, after his family dies, coincidentally and luckily, he has a really good friend that he works with that can make replica bodies. And wow, just like peanut butter and chocolate, he can put it together and make something awesome. Well, the boss doesn't like this. And, <laughs> and they have to do it underground, I don't know. It's really weird how they got to any. The science point. on this is impeccable, this, though. It's really bad. And, <laughs> and in the beginning, you could say to yourself, well, yeah, this is super stupid, but maybe it will be fun. Maybe they'll just not take it seriously, but then it gets boring. Yeah. And that is unexcusable for a bad movie already. Yeah. Um, I would go into this more, but there is like little twists and turns that shouldn't have happened at all <laughs> right. but the third I mean, act is just <laughs> out there like it really is it's and you figured maybe they would talk about 
maybe some of the differences these replicas yeah. have or how their lives are a little different, but they really just kind of shadow over that. And then at the end, you're just like, none of this could have ever happened, no. even in a fictional universe. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's interesting to me as, uh, I mean, you, there's some heavy-handed things in here like, uh, you know, his entire family dies. Yeah. And he only has three bodies he can bring back. So he has to make really what is the Sophie's choice because he has four family members. Mm -hmm. And he, so one of them can't be brought back. Yeah. And so, of course, in a Sophie's choice scenario, one of the kids has to be named Sophie. We have to write the name Sophie down on the piece of paper. Like, all right, who's going to die? Yeah. Like, all right, this is a little rough. Um <laughs> I mean, it's it's weird to me because you know he's he's taking consciousness from dead bodies and putting them into synthetic brains and, and robots. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, it's like, oh yeah, and by the way, you can clone human bodies too. We can just clone humans. They, I don't know. Like, oh, we can. And when these bodies, we got back to tanks like in Star Wars. We're it, just throwing bodies into. When when his family comes back too, there's this ominous. Ooh, things are different. Yeah. And you feel like maybe that movie's going to take that direction, but no, they're like, ooh. Something's different, and now we're going to forget about that, and we're just going to concentrate on this weird dynamic that at work. doesn't make any sense. No. And Thomas Middleditch, I like him a lot as his friend. I thought he was awful in this. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> it, there's so much in here. First off, you mentioned it right at the top. It is 2019, mm -hmm. and we're still doing Johnny Mnemonic style. We're manipulating the Internet. I have to move this and move that there and push this all with his Johnny Mnemonic headset on. Like this is what the 1994 world thought uh -huh. that the that computers were going to be. And 1994 graphics also yeah. for their absolutely uh, robot. It's like lawnmower like, man. We're going in here. <laughs> and we're doing this. this robot was absolutely terrible. Yeah. It it was really 1994. Did it? Were, was this movie made in 1994? Do you know? I, I know Keanu was this pretty really old. Really feels this. like one of those movies that's been sitting on a shelf for like five years. Yeah, it felt like that to me. I didn't. I didn't dig deep, but I mean, there's just so much stuff going on. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know, everyone's after this algorithm. The algorithm. Me, the algorithm. Yeah. I don't care about the algorithm no. at this point. It, it just felt like Keanu returning to form from that that gap between the Matrix and John Wick One. There was mm -hmm. that gap where he was just horrible yeah. and making bad choices and bringing his wooden, wooden acting style to bad movies and this felt like a return to that form yeah and like oh, Keanu why why I actually can't even see thought we were better than this I can't even see how the writers were convinced that this was something that could be done I don't I, know I really think this was a project that was someone's relative and they're like oh we need a tax write-off let's do this um, yeah. So, yeah, my score is not going to be great. What about I, yours? <laughs> <laughs> I love when they introduce the clones real quick, that they have John, Thomas Mendelich is, is telling him there's, like, gremlin-style rules to these clones, too. Like, it has to be a certain percentage, and it has to be this. And I'm like, oh, okay, none of that comes into play. No. I'm like, oh, cool, we're introducing rules for a very specific reason. This has to pay off later. It doesn't. No, it, the whole movie was full of that kind of stuff. <laughs> and they would just change just how you think the movie's going to go uh, throughout the movie until at the end when you're like, okay, this is it? Yeah. Really? Your reasoning isn't right. making sense at all. And I can't tell you because it might ruin it. I oh, don't course, know. You're but if you're watching it, it's already ruined for you already. Want to go see this. <laughs> this is a terrible movie. What'd you give old replicas? A generous 1.5. Uh, generous. I I didn't walk out. I wasn't offended. The story made sense. It just wasn't good. So I gave it an <laughs> even more generous two out of five. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you what, because of all this stupid stupidity, it it was almost a guilty pleasure for me as really? I'm watching it. I'm like, there's so much that doesn't make sense and it is just dumb. You could you could come to me in a year and go, what do you think, replicas? I'd be like, I don't know, it's kind of fun. If it didn't get boring at the end, it did get I, at the end. I would have. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's yeah. that's kind of what what killed it for me. So yeah, I gave it. Yeah, it's it's not worth seeing. Don't don't bother. There's other Keanu movies to see coming out soon. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I saw this back to back with dogs. It was a bad day for me. I had wow. a bad day this week. Yikes. <laughs> uh, let's take a quick look back, sir. For our movie throwback, we uh, were discussing a movie about maybe dogs, mm -hmm. maybe bringing things back to life, mm -hmm. maybe bringing dogs back to life. Mm -hmm. It's a great one, right? Ruth Bader we... Ginsburg. <laughs> RB... Actually, RBG, and there's no color. Right? Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a stretch. Um, <laughs> we decided to break our ten year rule for our movie throwback. We always have a ten year rule. It's, it's got to be, but uh, this is just too perfect of a, of a film for us. So we went back to 2012 for Tim Burton's Frankenweenie. Uh, Frankenweenie, uh, black and white stop motion animation. Uh, little boy Victor Frankenstein. He enjoys making movies. 
Uh, but his dad, voiced by Martin Short, by the way, uh, wants him to play baseball. Well, he's out there playing baseball. He also has his beloved dog, Sparky. Loves Sparky. Uh, Sparky's the star of the home videos that he makes. I mean, mm. everyone loves Sparky. Well, Sparky gets hit by a car and killed. And, uh, oh, man, it's tragic. And, uh, but Victor, being a Frankenstein, brings Sparky back to life thanks to lightning. And now we have a, an undead dog. Um, and uh, his secret gets out. Uh, the neighbor across the street, who's uh, an Igor type, finds out that uh, he's been bringing things, bringing a pet back to life. Word gets out. Now he's got to bring all his classmates, dead animals, back to life. Mm -hmm. Now we got a bunch of zombie animals running around town. This whole movie just kind of reminds me of like uh, if Tim Burton really could pick his childhood. Yeah. this would yeah. be his childhood. <laughs> that's great. That's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got we got him. Yeah, oh boy, that guy's that's evil. He's got he's crossing his fingers behind his back. Um, it's not. It doesn't turn out to be a good thing that these animals. Uh, are coming back from the dead because mm -hmm. uh, they bring things with them and uh, and uh, they start to uh, terrorize the town. Which we will find out later this year when we see Pet Cemetery. Right, right. <laughs> uh, and so the mayor, the mayor Burgermeister, I love that. I, I, there's so many odes to classic things in here. Yeah, there it's is. It's Tim Burton having a lot of fun in here. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to compare this with his other similar styled animation mm -hmm. with Corpse Bride and... Uh, uh, Nightmare Before Nightmare Christmas. Before Christmas. Um, and there's, you know, theories about how these tie in together and all that. It's a fun movie to me. It feels like Tim Burton having fun. Like, I think the best of Tim Burton mm -hmm. is his animation. I don't know. That's I, just me. No, well, I really like Tim Burton all the way through. Um, but the animation is special. He's the first one to kind of bring back this style yeah. um, back in the 90s with... Um, Nightmare Before Christmas, and now it's we pleasantly get at least one a year. It's just a very cute way of sh telling a story that I buy every time. Yeah. It's just so awesome. Um, this movie, interesting in another fact that it's black and white during a time where people don't make black and right. white movies. Yeah. Big homage, though. It's yeah. old cinema. Yeah, it's really cool. And, uh, you know, the, you track it down. It's based off of a short that he filmed back in 84 called mm -hmm. Frankenweenie. I believe I have that short on attached, um, to, the, attached to the Nightmare sure. Before Christmas Blu-ray that I have. Yeah. I, I really enjoy Frankenweenie. I had a lot of fun watching it. Um, I think it's a fun one. I like, like I said, I like all of his animation. Yeah. Um, I'm not a huge Tim Burton guy. Uh, I think a lot of his stuff feels very much the same. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like this. I like his animation quite a bit. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was worth breaking the rule for. There we go. Why not? We'll never do that again. <laughs> never. <laughs> um, next week, sir, uh, on the next week, uh, coming soon, We uh, actually it's going to be two weeks, um, we have uh, The Kid Who Would Be King. That's our coming soon, which is the King Arthur movie. I'm not looking The Sword in the Stone yeah. movie. No matter how many trailers I see of this, I'm not excited. This movie looks like it has Worst of the Year written all over it. In oh, my book. no, I wouldn't put in it In my there. book, it has Worst of the Year written all over it. <laughs> we also have Serenity. I love Serenity, but yeah. not the Serenity that... Uh. But this one stars Matthew McConaughey as a fishing boat captain whose ex-wife, Anne Hathaway, comes back to him and says, I need you to murder my husband. Hmm. And Matthew McConaughey has to decide whether he's going to murder her husband for her or not. Sounds interesting to me. I think I'd rather have a space cowboy. Yeah, movie, space yeah. cowboys are fun. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyways, those are the movies that will be coming out soon. Before we leave you, of course, we have to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters, the palace here in Sun Prairie. Thank you for sponsoring our show. Mike got his bucket of popcorn. He's ready to refill it for $4. I just want to get everybody anticipating yeah. that next week we're going to do our most anticipated movies. Absolutely, yep. sir. Yes, next week we're going to be talking. We have Glass, the M. Night Shyamalan film, the, mm -hmm. the long-awaited sequel to Unbreakable and, and Split. And that's it. So then the rest of the show is going to be our top 10 most anticipated movies for 2019. And usually I wouldn't mention that. I just wanted the anticipation. There's anticipation building. There's a lot of movies coming out in 2019. Some good, some not so good. We're going to talk about the ones that we are looking forward to the most next week. So that is definitely going to be fun to tune in for. Uh, otherwise, you can find us uh, online, Facebook or Twitter. Just look for Real Reviews TV. And uh, like hey. us, subscribe to us, share us. And also, thank you, Marcus Theaters, for hosting us. You guys are awesome. You're Absolutely. always great. I'm going to show up there again one of these days, yeah. do a show from there. That's always a good time. Anyways, until we meet again next week, I'm Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching.